Um, so I, I want to know where exactly are you from? What you're from? University of Nebraska in Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And what are you doing there? What's your position? I uh, I do research on ecophysiology, pest management, and uh, let's see what else: conservation biology, which is still ecophysiology, and then forensic forensic entomology. Um, <laughs> our our lab's doing a lot of work on development of blow flies and establishing parameters for time of death and so forth. And um, I guess I do case work because that kind of comes with the territory. With the forensics? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So we do mostly homicide investigations because that's typically where time of death becomes an issue. So um, on the conservation biology side, we have one of the most endangered insects in North America, Salt Creek tiger beetle occurs exclusively in Lancaster County around the city of Lincoln and it's a um, it's a classic indicator species. There's remnant salt marshes that occurred in the eastern Great Plains and 90 percent, more than 90 percent of those have been eliminated and so it's an exclusive salt marsh species. Ecologically it's cool because there's a complex of, spe of these tiger beetles that occur on salt marshes so mm -hmm. you can look at questions like uh, niche specialization and ecological or physiological adaptation, which kind of fits with the ecophysiology things. So it's a, um, it was originally what we called the Save the Whales project, but it's since grown and grown. So we're doing a lot more work on that. And then sort of my core research over the last 20 years has been on uh, plants and photosynthesis, which is how do insects, uh, herbivores alter photosynthesis. And so we've worked on um, various applied systems, like especially soybean. And then we've also done, th done things in native systems, principally with um, milkweed. We wanted to work at a plant that was heavily chemically defended and mm -hmm. see if those responses mm -hmm. were different. But because we're working in salt marshes, we've looked at some salt adapted plants, so that's been very cool. So I have a great job in that I get to pursue lots of different things. and. I get to work on projects that are really quite basic in nature versus those that have a strong application. And for me, that's been a great part of my career. It's part of what attracted me to entomology, the fact that you can do fundamental research, but you can also do all this, these things that have a real interesting application to society. So, so I've been really lucky in that. Well, it really does sound like you're all over the place. Uh, yeah, this test, test management and conservation and forensics yeah, they don't, they don't seem like and photosynthesis. How did you get to be so varied in all these? Well, Is it people approaching you or just you having a personal interest in various projects and diving in? The, the, the photosynthesis and test management dates from my um, graduate work with Larry Pettigo. Mm -hmm. One of the key issues that emerged in, in really in the 70s and has carried forward that if you're going to manage pests more rationally, you have to be able to characterize how, how they are, um, how insects are really affecting yield and plant growth in a very quantitative way. And so that has been, has been a real emphasis in my career. So, so that's, that's the tie into the photosynthesis. And that's the tie into the photosynthesis. One of the ideas that, that we had pursued was by looking at primary plant metabolism, we would be able to sort out where um, insects were having an impact on that would be likely to be magnified in yield or some other parameter versus those that wouldn't. And it has some really cool ecological links because it also relates sort of not directly to, to fitness issues. Mm -hmm. so, um, so in that work, we've, I've done a lot of things with, that relate to, you know, trying to relate photosynthesis to yield, looking at models for how yield loss is driven by um, Oh, different parameters with um, uh, whether it's photosynthesis or so forth. There's some, there's actually some pretty big experimental challenges doing that. But that's been fun, and ironically, uh, I didn't think I would be very well known for this, but as a consequence of that, that work is all expressed through economic injury levels, economic thresholds. Mm -hmm. So, and, and because Larry Pedigo was a leader in that, I've spent a lot of my career being involved on that sort of decision theory, how you use that. So that was the core, and I was always interested in relationships of organisms to the biotic and abiotic environment. So the tiger beetle issue came up. My first paper was a morphology paper on tiger beetles, and I, you know, so I liked them. 
And with my tech, my research technologist was the guy who got things going, Steve Spomer. And Steve said, you know, I really think that something's wrong with this beetle and the habitat shrinking. So we worked for about eight years without any funding, trying to document things. And then after a lot of efforts, it, we got it on the state endangered list. And then the federals, federal followed. And it would be great if money rained down on us, but at least we have enough funds now that we're doing we're doing additional things, and that's kind of grown in directions I didn't think it would. We're doing captive rearing. Really, the population has reached the point where, um, I mean, we're finding only a couple hundred individuals oh, in wow. the wild. Yeah. So, and there's a, a really radical compaction of habitat. So I never really thought I'd be engaged in running an insect zoo, but in a sense, we're we're doing the, we're set, we're setting the insect the rearing parameters. Right now, we have the rearing facilities. So, long term, we're going to be working on restoration reintroduction. That means we have to look at behave overposition behavior and these other things. You have so to assess and all that. Afterwards. You have to assess those things. So it's I think that's true of a lot of careers. You may start in a certain area, but as you get you get into it, opportunities expand or you go in different directions. Mm -hmm. um, I had a student who worked on attraction to light. It turns out the beetles are highly attracted to artificial light at night. They're supposed, well, they are diurnal predators, but they're very active at night. Most of the overposition occurs at night. So it's that sort of thing. You discover this and then you obviously you want to go to the next You're step to see on. what's going yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, related to that then, what did you actually want to be when you were a kid? Um, like all, I thought this was true of all kids in the 60s or all boys in the 60s. I wanted to be an astronaut. Um, when I went to college, I started, in, I started in physics, switched as a sophomore to chemistry. And so really, the interest that I had was I wanted to be a scientist. I don't think there was ever any doubt about that. And I came to biology late. Um, I took my first entomology course because I could... I could take it the same time I was rolled in intro bio, and I thought it'd be cool. And I've been doing entomology for a summer job. I was doing, um, surveying mosquito populations mm -hmm. and so forth. Took that first entomology course, knew that's what I wanted to do for my life. And I, got, I was lucky, I took my, I, next semester I took an ecology course, and I said, this is great. Insect ecology, that is it for me. Oh. And it, it's kind of held, held true through my career. That is really exciting. So did you have an interest in entomology at all before you had the job with the mosquito survey? Absolutely not. None. Zero. None. In fact, I was uh, so allergic to mosquito bites as a child, I had to go through desensitization shots. As an adult, I still occasionally have an allergic reaction. So I remember when I was in high school and college working summers, I looked at that as some sort of uh, cosmic revenge on the pain. And I was kind of... Um, yeah, I had allergies. I'm not athletic, I think, as you can probably see, and I wasn't as a kid. So I was kind of, uh, I'm glad it's raining, I'm indoors, nobody's going to tell me I have to go out of so outside. And I think my parents were always shocked when I wasn't just an entomologist, but I'm out in the field, I'm doing collections, I'm, I'm flying to the Amazon and doing stuff. And um, yeah, it's not where, it's not at all where I thought I would be when I was a child. So 